sitting in the Dublin airport, um, heading to Manchester, and Dublin was awesome. We loved it. Uh, this was a special trip for us, for those of you who don't know. That happened. <laughs> so we're engaged now. Um, this is my fiance, Rachel. Say hi, Rachel. Hi. <laughs> this is my fiance, Jacob. Cool. <laughs> um, Way cooler traveling with your fiance versus boyfriend slash girlfriend. Saying boyfriend and girlfriend feels childish. We're too sophisticated for that now. Yeah. Well, now I don't know if childish sounds right, but like. <coughs> If you're checking into a hotel and you say, "Oh yeah, we're just this is, we're boyfriend and girlfriend," I think it's like, "Oh, these kids came over and and did some traveling." But if you say, "It's my fiance," <laughs> it's like, "Oh, oh, <laughs> it's these guys." Um, but Lund or, uh, Dublin was amazing. The city is just absolutely beautiful. Um, you want to tell them about? How it happened. Night number one. Night number one. That's when it happened. Yes. So we obviously landed here, made our way back into Dublin, um, got dropped off kind of in the city center area, um, which is where Temple Bar and Grafton Street and everything are. And we saw some cool stuff walking back to our hotel. And then we ended up taking a two hour nap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But then after that, we went out um, to a couple pubs, and we were walking around. And Jacob was like, "Huh, oh, this would be a good spot for a picture. And I was like, okay, because we've been, the way we've been taking all of our pictures is we set up our camera, and there's an app um, where you can take a picture, like, standing far away from the camera. Remotely. Yeah, that. And, uh... I just assumed that that's what he was doing, and I go. I usually go and stand in the frame so that he can line up the shot or whatever. And he was doing that, and um, he starts walking over to me afterward. And I was like, "Oh, the timer's on. Why is the timer on?" And I turned to look at him, and he's down on a knee in front of lots of people. And he asked me to marry him. It wasn't that many. It was a decent amount. They clapped for us. They clapped. It was fun. I was completely surprised. I didn't, uh, everything kind of, it didn't, no, but it, it felt like nobody else was there to me. I don't know. Just, I didn't realize it in the moment. Yeah, in the moment, I was like, after a little bit, I was like, oh, people are clapping for us right now. <laughs> cool. <laughs> they must have, they must have saw what happened. Um, but, it's, it's one of those things where I keep looking at the pictures, and then I get all like, mmm, -hmm again. <laughs> it's true. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it feels surreal. Um, it's weird getting used to saying fiancé. Yeah. But it's awesome. It is. just walked around the city once we got into Dublin from the airport we didn't take a bus we didn't uber we didn't do anything anywhere Dublin is a very walkable city mm -hmm. um, and if you want to go from one side of the city to the other like, it might make sense to do an uber uh, they don't have Lyft here but uber works pretty well um, and yeah we just pretty much just walked around um, when I proposed, it was Christmas Eve, uh, and... Christmas Eve is huge here. It's like New Year's Eve in the, in Everyone's the US. Everyone's out at the pubs. Yeah. It was, which was a cool vibe. Yeah, so it was, it was fun. We had a few, few drinks before it happened, but then Christmas Day came around, and I didn't realize this before we got here, but the whole city of Dublin shuts down on Christmas. Um, businesses are closed, uh, people stay home with their families and things like that. And uh, 
That was kind of fun for us, though. Yeah. Being tourists, we got to just walk around and see, like, St. Patrick's Cathedral and Grafton Street and all these little places where we just, we walked around and no one was around, so we could take whatever pictures we want. We could, I don't know, just kind of live in the city, which was really cool. It's kind of touristy in Dublin. So it was nice to not have that and kind of just be able to, you know, live as a local on basically like a normal day. Uh, it didn't really feel like Christmas, um, but it's also like the first Christmas we've spent away from family and stuff like that. So maybe that's part of the reason why. Um, but we walked around for probably four hours. I think we saw five or six businesses that were open mm -hmm. and they were all like either Little. like convenience stores mm -hmm. or restaurants um, or, you know. and like restaurant it'd be like the place we ate was a fast food pizza chicken wings, chicken wings french fries kind of place it was very fancy clearly Christmas um, dinner it was a big <laughs> fancy Christmas dinner um, he's lying it wasn't but it was good. I enjoyed it. We had leftovers. We did. Um, that was the cool part about our hotel. Was it was like a studio apartment, which was really cool. So we had a little stovetop, refrigerator, microwave, dishwasher. It was kind of cool. Yeah, I've never stayed in a hotel like that. It was like it was called an apart hotel. Mm -hmm. Apart hotel, and those are pretty big over here. Um, it's basically like a small studio apartment. So. That was kind of cool, but we cooked the first night and heated up our food the other nights and stuff like that, so we were able to save some money on food. what happens when you try to get videos of the pigeons. <laughs> it was after that. <laughs> yeah, because you pissed them off. Today, we went and toured the Guinness factory, mm -hmm. or storehouse, brewery, if you will. <laughs> um, and that was awesome. I, I'm not a huge Guinness drinker, um, but as a general beer drinker, I can definitely appreciate the history of it and the work that has gone into making them a household name. Mm -hmm. in the beer industry and I didn't realize this maybe I'm silly American not knowing this but uh, get the owner of get or the creator of Guinness signed uh, was it a seven seven thousand nine thousand nine thousand year lease for the property that he opened uh, his brewery in and like talk about a visionary he's he was, he was banking on his 
company being around for 9,000 years. That was pretty... Yeah. That was pretty... And they had the old lease, the original lease with the signature on it. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And the whole, like, even the way the building was set up was really cool because you go up the escalator to where, it's a self-guided tour, and so you go to where it starts, and the, the atrium is the shape of a big beer glass, which was really cool. Yeah. I thought. Um, and at the top, there's this big sky lounge type deal um, with, like, a 360-degree view, and you, you can just see the entire city. It's on the seventh floor, I yeah. believe. And that was really cool. So we were able to go up there and get some cool pictures and stuff like that. That's something that I, I liked a lot about Dublin too is that there's, and we found this in London as well, there's not a lot of skyscrapers, or in Dublin there weren't any. The, the tallest peaks were the, from the cathedrals and the churches. Yeah. And then, I didn't know this, but Dublin has like mountains surrounding it as well. Um, and when we got up to that top floor, we got to see like that kind of side of it. So it goes from having all of these old buildings to all of a sudden just green fields and mountains going up into it. It was really cool. Indeed. Um, but yeah, that was the Guinness tour. thing I did want to want to talk about uh, mostly for my friends and family back home in Wisconsin um, the we were out at a pub last night that was it had like a little bit of a nightclub feel we got there before it got busy so we were able to you know, sit at the bar and chat with the bartender and stuff like that but then all of a sudden this guy walks in one of the biggest beards I've ever seen <laughs> just really long hair and uh, I thought he looked like a fun guy uh, but then I realized he was wearing a, a Clay Matthews jersey, which, you know, I had to ask about. I had to, or more so just give him shit about it. Uh, so we started talking. He was sitting next to me at the, on the, at the bar. And uh, I don't know, I'd say we talked to him for at least an hour. Um, an hour and a half. Even. Yeah, and he was just, he, he had been nice to the guy. States before, uh, and we were kind of like, exchanging stories and stuff like that and, um, he just likes Clay Matthews because of his hair it <laughs> sounded like but uh, it was really cool to meet a local that we were able to sit down and talk to like we've talked to other locals and pubs but it's usually you know hey where are you from and then you talk to him for five minutes and they, they go on their way but this guy sat down and he he talked to us for a good five minutes uh, or five minutes uh, like at least an hour at least. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. What would you rate Dublin oh, yeah. this time? We're gonna come back. Maybe. For sure. Yeah. If I had to rate it, I'd put it at a 9.1. I was really impressed with it. Um, and obviously, you know, the whole engagement thing <laughs> kind of... <laughs> made the trip but uh yeah 9.1 it was beautiful great sights the history of it is just remarkable churches that are a thousand years old almost and it's it's just insane um definitely want to come back want to see more want to spend more time in the pubs <laughs> uh what would you rate it mm, probably a 9.5 that's because i got a really great gift here what was that <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's it from Dublin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bringing this flight to I212 to Manchester will board shortly at gate 415. Well, 
And that's it from Dublin. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll be doing another video in a few days, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be spending two days in Manchester and then one day in Liverpool, and then we will be going back to London via train and spending one more day before we fly back to the States. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.